Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Uh, so not too long ago on the channel, we did some extreme overclocking with our Ryzen 3900X. Uh, it was right after the chip had launched and we used a liquid chiller uh, to achieve those overclocking results. And at the time we did pretty good uh, for myself and my friend Alex, who are definitely not professional overclockers. Um, I believe at the time we ranked somewhere around 10th, 11th, 12th, somewhere around there. Um, <clears throat> since that video, many, many more people have gotten their hands on that chip and many more capable overclockers have gotten a hold of it as well and put it under liquid nitrogen. Uh, so needless to say, our score fell rather quickly. Uh, so we decided to get back together for round two overclocking the same 3900X. Now, since that last video, one big change is the chip is not mine anymore. Um, and that's probably a good thing because I don't know if I would have been as comfortable putting my hardware under dry ice uh, like we're doing in this video. Uh, but thankfully, Alex, uh, Alex is a, a, what I would call a risk taker in comparison to me. Um, so he is totally fine with, with dry icing and if, if he had the capabilities of doing liquid nitrogen I have no doubt that he would do that as well. Um, so it's his chip now but he brought it back over and we decided to go for round two, this time using dry ice rather than the liquid chiller. So there's a few differences uh, between dry ice and using a liquid chiller. Uh, the main difference is uh, using a liquid chiller is much more similar to traditional liquid cooling. Uh, you just have the equivalent of, uh, let's say like an air conditioning unit that is hooked up to the loop and chills the water. Uh, most chillers do not go below zero, uh, so we were right around zero or just above zero uh, while overclocking with the chiller. Um, with dry ice, it is more similar to what you're used to when you see liquid nitrogen overclocking in that you have a pot and we actually use an LN2 pot for this. Uh, we actually use uh, Kingpin's pot for this and I've got it in the shop behind me. That's actually Alex's. He just, unfortunately for him, accidentally left it at my house when he left yesterday, but it's perfect since I get to have it in the video now. Um, but we use that pot and we fill it up with acetone and then drop dry ice in. Um, at first it is very angry and wants to bubble out and then once it cools down and pulls down to uh, around negative 30 to negative 60 degrees it starts to calm down a little bit and you can keep it filled with dry ice at that point. Um, but it's definitely a little bit more dangerous than running a chiller. Uh, chiller everything is enclosed. Um, the only um, I guess the only thing that you really have to worry about with a chiller is if a tube pops, which is probably not going to happen. Um, with, with this and, and using a pot, it's very easy to boil that pot over and end up with acetone all over the board uh, and your video card and whatever else you're working with. So we got everything set up uh, and started uh, pulling down to negative 60 degrees. Um, Got a couple cameras set up. I used this camera that I'm talking to now and our buddy brought over his GoPro as well. So I got a couple angles with that uh, and I'll sprinkle that footage in while I'm talking. Uh, but pulled it down and immediately right off the bat was scoring right around what we were able to peek out at with the chiller. Um, so fantastic scores, um, which they should be for what we had to do to achieve them. But right out of the gate, it was, it was on par with our best scores uh, with the chiller. Uh, slowly started working frequency up and memory up and memory timings down. Uh, and then we got a uh, postcode error. And I'm thinking, and Alex is thinking that this is probably because the back side of the socket got too cold. Um, we do have a socket heater on the back of it. Um, it's also a kingpin socket heater. Uh, we did not have it plugged up initially. We weren't sure that we were going to need it. Um, but uh, if what we're thinking was correct, I think our socket just got too cold on the back side. And we started getting some postcode errors and could not boot. And thus we had to let it warm back up, dump the pot, um, and reseed everything and start over. I have no doubt that my neighbors were probably wondering what in the heck we're doing. 
uh, as Alex comes out on my front porch barefoot with a motherboard and an LN2 pot sitting on top of it and dumps that into my um, mulch bed. Um, and it looks exactly like a, what a fog machine would emit when it hits the ground. So uh, probably a very funny view from my neighbor's house and they're probably very concerned about what I'm doing over here at this point. So we got it back in, got everything back, uh, reseated, set up and start pulling it down. And again, we're going up in frequency, up in memory and trying to pull those memory timings down as much as possible. Um, scoring better than we initially did we get a little bit farther this time and then i happened um so i asked alex and alejandro our other friend that was with us i said hey guys do you do you mind if i load up the pot a little bit i haven't had a chance yet we're using a regular tablespoon and just scooping dry ice and dropping it in the pot and i did not realize that it was not chilled down as far enough as it should have been and i put a chunk of dry ice in there that was unfortunately a bit too big it did splash over um, but um, thankfully it didn't kill anything at that point um, it did cause the socket to get wet though so we did have another no boot issue had to pull everything back down again for a second time uh, dump the pot out in the front yard to my neighbor's horror and uh, get reset back up and start going again. After we got set up for the last time, uh, we were getting close to the end of the day and my wife was very much tired of us taking over the entire office upstairs. Uh, so we knew we were a little bit limited on time. So we started pushing a little bit harder, a little bit quicker. Um, so we got the, the back plate heater installed. It's hooked up, cooking, doing its thing. Uh, and we're continuing to push frequencies up. Uh, we were able to get the CPU to 5 gigahertz on all cores, so that's all 12 cores running at 5 gigahertz with SMT enabled. Um, and then I'm going to pull up and cheat and tell you the rest of the specs from my phone from the HWBot submission. Uh, so 5 gigahertz on all cores, and we had the memory running at 3600 megahertz. Uh, and our timings were at 14, 14, 14, 32. Uh, and that gave us an overall score in Cinebench R15 of 3857. Uh, now this was our best screen captured score. Um, we did end up hitting a score that was just a little bit higher, um, but then disaster struck. Uh, which is unfortunate because I feel like we still had quite a bit of headroom. Um, I, I feel like we still could have gone a little bit farther. Um, we weren't hitting any hard walls. We weren't seeing a ton of blue screens or anything like that. And we had just started to push memory timings down. Uh, we were kind of checking the scores on HWBot and seeing what similar setups uh, scored and what they were running as far as memory frequencies and timing so we were kind of trying to mimic that as our core speed was higher than theirs but they were still hitting higher scores than us because of their mem memory frequencies and timings uh, so we were kind of trying to mimic that and um, i'm looking over at alex as he's uh, inputting stuff into the bios and into ryzen master and alex turns towards me and right about the time he turns towards me I hear the dreaded hiss and pop. And I wish that I could have captured either my face or Alex's face because we both locked eyes at that point. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we both had the same look of just horror on our faces uh, because we both knew exactly what had happened. Um, to a certain degree, we knew exactly what had happened. We knew we had broken something, uh, but at that point we weren't quite sure what or how or why. Um, now running at 5 gigahertz, we, we only had the V core up in the 1.45 range, uh, so we weren't pumping a ton of voltage into this chip by any means, um, and the memory was running at 1.4 volts as well. So I was fairly certain that we didn't run into any issue where we had, we had overvolted or overpowered the CPU or the memory. Uh, but right after that hiss and pop, um, we could immediately smell the terrible smell of burnt electronics. Um, so at this point, we're working on an X470 crosshair motherboard. Um, we specifically used that motherboard rather than a brand new X570 because we knew damaging stuff while dry ice overclocking is always a possibility. 
Um, so we're using a little bit older board that Alex got for relatively cheap from our friend Dexter um, with the anticipation that we may break it. Um, so as we're taking everything apart, um, both of us just have our fingers crossed. Hey, please let this be the motherboard that has broken and not this chip. Uh, this chip is overclocked really well for us. So other than being out, you know, $500 for the chip, we really just didn't want to lose a chip that was that good of an overclocker. Um, if it had been the chip, I have no doubt that Alex would have just ponied up $750 and jumped to the 3950X and we'd be here doing the same thing with that. Uh, but thankfully it was not the chip. It was also not his very expensive overclocking memory from Galax. Uh, he had a really nice kit of Galax memory. Um, that was okay as well. Turned out to be the motherboard and it took us a little bit to find the damage to the motherboard just because Alex had used liquid tape all over the front and the back of the motherboard to try to insulate it um, and, and keep any, any condensation away from the core components on it. Uh, so it took us a little bit peeling back liquid tape, looking at the front and back. And the first thing that we noticed was a very, very small, almost microscopic shunt resistor on the back side of the board below the socket. Uh, that had actually twisted and come popped loose from one of its solder joints and was kind of turned sideways. So if it normally sat on the board like this, it was now sitting like this with just this top connection uh, still connected to the motherboard. Um, so I was thinking to myself and, and Alex as well, that was a pretty loud hiss and pop that we heard and I don't think that's just breaking one solder joint on a shunt resistor. Uh, so turn the board back over and start looking at the front and sure enough eventually we found a chip on the front side. Uh, it's next to some power delivery but again it's below the CPU socket so I don't believe it's CPU core power delivery or SOC power delivery. Um, the, the choke looked fine. It's, it's a little, um, it's just a little IC that has popped and unfortunately the way that it popped I can no longer read what is on the front of this so I can't fully identify what it is. So um, I'm sure I already have at this point but if not I'll pop it up on screen and if any of you all happen to know what this chip is um, please let me know. I'd love to know. I still haven't been able to find it online yet or if any of you out there have the same board uh, and have access to that chip that is not destroyed if you could just uh, shoot me over a picture of it just so I can get what it says on the front of it to do a little bit more research um, I would be very grateful and so would Alex as well. Um, so at the end of the day yes we destroyed the motherboard uh, but we did end up scoring um, quite high in Cinebench. Again, that was 3857. Uh, and we are currently number 11 on HWBot as far as 3900X CPUs go. And we are number 16th on HWBot for 12 core CPUs in general. So, um, had some fun yesterday. Unfortunately, busted a motherboard, but uh, we learned something from it. Um, liquid tape is far cheaper than replacing motherboards and liquid tape does not hurt motherboards. So uh, what we took away from this is liquid tape more of the motherboard, um, especially when we're doing dry ice overclocking where it is notorious for the pot bubbling over and you end up with acetone on everything. So uh, that's what we took away from this one. Uh, had some fun. Happy to bring you guys along for the ride. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, make sure that you get subscribed if, if you aren't already and hit that like button. We would greatly appreciate that. And we will see you in the next one.